Okay, so the underside's all ready now, so I think we're going to go on now. I've got the pour 15. I've just poured some out into a little cup. I think it's probably too much. Apparently this goes a long way, this stuff. Don't put it back in the tin, apparently. Be careful when you put the lid back on, because it glues on for life, and you can never get back inside the tin. So I'm gonna, I think I'm going to do the underside first. So I'm going to set this up. I'm going to work my way through the underside, and then when that's done, I'm going to go on the inside and start painting the inside, so let's get on with it. The underside of the car has now had a single coat of pour. And I'll show you the finished result for the single coat I've given it so far. I do want to give it a second coat, especially on the underside. I should give it two at least, but I think you meant to give a second coat when it's still a bit tacky, but I've left it now. It's been a few days now, been a week. What I'm going to go on to do now is I'm going to, we'll have a quick look at the finished result of the single coat of pour. What I want to do next is I will seam seal the joints where possible and inside the car and I'd like to give the second coat of pour to the under. What I'd like to do at this stage, get this side finished as much as I can. Probably might do the inner wheel arch of the back, I'm not 100% sure. And then what I want to do is get the wheels back on the car and then... So we'll go under the car now and then you can see what we've done so far. So this is the finished result to underside. Quite happy with it overall. This is the semi-gloss uh, finish. You can see where it's had one coat. I don't know if it's, the camera's picking it up. It's got a bit of a sheen to it. But I think where I've gone over it a couple of times, where it's dry, and I've gone over it again a second time, it's actually got quite a nice sheen to it there. That would be a nice finish to have on it there. I don't know if it comes up on the camera. Just show you working your way down. I've gone right down. this half of the car all the way down up to where our axle support is so that's all painted so what I want to go on and do next is ideally I'd like to get the seam sealer going now and just seal all this off here it's still got some original there so what I'm thinking of doing is just squirting it in with the gun 
and then just probably just go with your finger I don't know I've never done it before finger or the brush just get a brush and just go over it so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now All right, I've got a, a small brush. I'm gonna try with this first. See how it looks. Just gonna. I think the finger trick's probably better actually, but I'll just go with that. It's turned out quite well, happy with that. So I think that's what I'm going to do with this side, on the underside of the car. I don't really want to start seam sealing around these world joints, it doesn't look very professional I don't think from the underside. But I will do, we'll go inside the car. And I'll show you what I want to do on the inside. So this is the inside of the car now. The underside, I'm happy with it's finished. This has had a coat of pour. <clears throat> I doubt if I'll give it a second coat. I think it needs it on the inside. Can't really... Uh, yeah. See all the seam joints there. So, I'm gonna. what I'm thinking of doing here, you can see the old stuff actually. It's, it's literally just brushed in there, I think, the original stuff. So, what I'm thinking of doing, it might be a waste of time. I might mask it off first. I might put some masking tape around the welds. Give it a coat of seam sealer. Pull the tape off. It's the inside of the arch, the uh, inner seal. Unfortunately, my camcorder's took one knock too many now and it won't focus. I think it's had it. So I'm just doing it off my phone now. I can't set this up, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to. I'm going to attempt to mask it off as best as I can. I'll come back and show you and then we'll get on and seam seal it round and we'll come back to that. So I've squirted a load of mastic down in between the tape joints. I've literally, this was spot welded through. This was like um, plug welded through on this. This is where the chassis support beam runs through under the floor pan. I mean, it probably doesn't need it there, but where it's been plug welded, there's obviously holes going through it. And I've gone up inside so I'm gonna, don't know what I'm gonna do actually. I might try the brush technique first. I don't wanna start, get a good coverage down and come back and see how it looks. I tried using the brush, the brush trick, but all it was doing, it was literally just pushing the, the seam sealer around. It wasn't actually pushing it down into the joints where I wanted it to go. What I did in the end, I just got a piece of plastic. I've sort of shaped it a little bit on the end, like a bit of a half moon gentle curve on it. I've just used it as a spatula. I've just literally just scraped it round with that. It seemed to be really effective actually. So that's all the seam sealer down in this front quadrant. I've just gone over all the weld joints that I did. So you can see the weld lines that I did. I've gone up the inside of the inner arch, the inner seal, rocker panel to some people, some countries. So I'm, I'm going to take the tape off now. I'm going to take the tape off and come back. Then once that's done, I'm going to work on the back side, the back half of the floor pan. There's not as much to cover up there. I've got to do the... Obviously, I've got to go around the inner seal again. I'll see how I can get in and set up and get inside the rear quarter panel because there was quite a bit of welding going on there, so that probably is a good sealing up. So once that's done, that'll be the inside of the done then, the inside. So. I'm gonna go ahead and take the tape off first and we'll come back and see how it looks. So that's it with the tape removed now. I mean, it did make a bit of a mess actually yanking the tape off. I thought it was a bit of a waste of time to be honest, but it sort of gives you straightish lines, I suppose. 
I had to go over the little spatula again just to get the edges down because it sort of just pulls it all off really. I don't know. I mean, I think I'm going to do it again. It doesn't take long. I know it makes a bit of a mess. You'll go over it. At least you get straightish lines. It doesn't look too too much of a bodge man repair, doesn't it then? So that's the front foot well done now. I'm going to go on to the back side now. I'm going to tape it all off again. Oh, I think I got a bit better this time actually. I think the trick was I was pulling the tape away from the seam sealer and what it was doing, it was pulling it, it was dragging it across the floor with it. What I did this time, I was pulling it sort of into the, the I was pulling the edge back into it and it's kept a nice line. I've just gone over it with a scraper again now. So that's these edges done. I've gone around everything there in a seal. The only thing I forgot to do, which I might just do freehand, is I've got to go over that little plate, which is the inner wheel arch. And ideally, I'd like to get inside this uh, rear quarter panel, really, and give that a good sealing up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll... Just a last minute update on the BMW underside preparation work. It was a satin finish, the top coat that I bought, or the Paw 15. I had a little tint of the gloss finish which I did the inner arch with and I actually did like the gloss finish effect so I decided to get some top coat pour 15 which is this stuff but apparently you can't put this straight on top of cured previous pour 15 so I've had to go ahead and buy this stuff which is self etching primer which so basically I've scuffed it down the original the underside that I did, I did two coats of the Pore 15 of the satin, but I'm not going to be going under there again, so I might as well do what I want now and get it finished. It doesn't take long, so I've scuffed it down and I've gone ahead and just done the etch primer, and I'll quickly show you that. And I'm going to go ahead now and put the gloss top finish coat on. So let's quickly have a quick look underneath. So it's a grey paint, the underside, the etch primer, and it, they say it's ready to paint after 30 minutes. I don't know if you can see it under there. I mean, this stuff was like glue. I mean, it, I had to work quickly with it out of the pot because it. So that's given me a, a primed surface now. So apparently now I can go straight on my Pore 15 gloss black now. And that's had about about four coats of paint so far. This underside, this this half of the underside. So I'm just going to do that and then that's done and I'm going to start putting it back together. I've got to put the prop shaft back together, put the suspension back together, bolt it all up and then I want to start getting ready for turning the car around hopefully. There's a load of rubbish inside the car and under the car that all needs to be cleared out. Big long process. Hopefully we'll get this done in the next couple of weeks hopefully. Just a quick update. Also I found some old pictures of the car that I took before I even started doing any of the rust repair work and it's amazing I didn't realize the severity of it when I first bought the car actually yeah it was really bad I forgot how bad it was when I first got it but I've, I might do a quick little montage of the I might do a look the rusty bits in the car